Hello there, and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robin Sun. Please like this video if you like it. Comment, because I really would love to hear from you. Subscribe and share with people you would like to ta -da, make postcards across the COVID miles, or any miles, or just because they're awfully fun to make. So today, this is such an old standard, you know, um, this is weaving here. This is a really easy one. So it's just weaving strips of paper. And then um, I used Mod Podge um, to uh, really make sure that everything was stuck down and there weren't any loose edges. Um, you can see there's a little shine to them. In this one, I used, oh, you know what? My daughter had a book. Um, I mean, we all read it. Um, the Little House on the Prairie series. And one of the books had gotten really banged up and um, torn up. And so I used some pages in there. Um, I think this was about Christmas and you can see the word popcorn. It was something about they were with Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Somebody Boast. That was it. And um, I think it was either Christmas or it was winter. And they were ended up making popcorn together. Um, so those were really happy words and I liked them. So I made, I used that text as sort of the pattern on that one. And this is scraps of um, scrapbooking paper. Just some really pretty patterns that I liked a lot. And these two are on a black cardstock background. And you can see how shiny they are. Even, this is really cool how you get some of the squares you know, like there's a texture to the tape. So I used metal duct tape. Um, you can get it at hardware stores, at the big box, um, you know, home design and decoration and building stores. Um, yeah, they all have them. Um, yeah, this was really tricky <laughs> because the only way to weave it was to take the the backing paper off but then it's sticky and it this is really sticky um so it's kind of tricky and you can see right there that I got into some wrinkles where yeah I just couldn't make everything flat some of the places were really even and some of them got a little mixed up this one even overlapped which was terrible but anyway um, they all, if you take a bone folder and go over them, well, that actually kind of scratches. Use the back of your fingernail. Um, and I did not use any kind of a Mod Podge or anything on these. Um, they won't come up. It would, you'd have to pick at them with a awl to make them come up. Um, so that'll be really safe going through the, um, yeah, there's some wrinkles in this one too. Anyway, and then I got to thinking because this is how my brain works. You know, if, if these are some pretty cute ways to make postcards, um, then what else can we do? Because that's not enough. So I took some writing of my own and I cut it line by line out. And then I cut just free cut and you can tell the um that one's pretty skinny and that one's pretty wide so I let that be okay I decided that was a part of the design I meant that um so I just free cut some strips of blue paper and then I wove them all together and I will tell you that I taped these strips were quite long they were like seven or eight inches long and I taped 
I got these blue ones in line and taped them down. And then I wove the white um, papers. And then I think what I did was I put Mod Podge on the blue cardstock, the dark blue card cardstock underneath. And I, I took this weaving, which was really kind of shimmery, and I placed it and the Mod Podge was still wet enough that I could make sure that everything, you know, was inside the lines where I wanted it. Um, and then I just turned it over and cut off all the extra pieces of strips. And I put a postcard backing on it. <laughs> I think that came out really well. I don't know who I will... Ooh, I do know who I will send that to. Okay, so then I said, that's not enough. We need some more ideas. So I have another idea, which I will make with you right now. So can you see those? They're kind of cute like that. So I have two colors of cardstock, one in yellow and one in um, black. And I have, this is my sort of super template. I measured it very carefully and cut it very carefully um, so that it would be exactly four by six inches which is the standard size for a postcard at least here in the United States. Oh I was thinking about this the other day. Um, what do I do with my big scissors? Um, even though this four by six inches is the standard size for uh, postcards in the United States and I'm assuming pretty much in Europe and Australia and everywhere else too. Um, yeah, um, you can make postcards bigger. You just have to pay more postage. So it would take a letter stamp instead of a postcard stamp. So that's what, 12 cents different or whatever, something like that. So... Um, yeah, so you could do any of these kinds of designs. You could make gingerbread people and you could do paper cuts and you could make watercolors and you could make color collages. And yeah, you could do any of these things on, um, bigger papers. Um, that would be fine. You just have to pay more money for it. I mean, I think I've seen, what size is that? Yeah, they were nine by six big advertising postcards, you know, that were huge. So, um, yeah, you can, you just have to check on, the um, postage with the postal people. Okay, so this I keep around all the time. I cut cardstock to size with that. So we have two colors. I think I'm going to make the black be the horizontal and the yellow be the vertical. So I would recommend a long blade, not a short blade for this because we want the, we're going to cut flowing, wiggly, curvy shapes. And um, yeah, I would recommend for cutting these too, to use a long bladed scissor. I mean, you could actually measure, that's a thing. People do that all the time. Not necessarily me, but some people. So what we're gonna do is cut curvy shapes and I want you to keep them exactly in order because it would be too hard to weave um, sorry I'm trying to do left brain and right brain at the same time and it's very tricky very tricky um, yeah, because you couldn't 
weave these wiggly shapes together without a lot of space in between them if you didn't keep them in the same rhythm. So you don't want to get, I've tried this before years ago where I really like curved. Yeah, you don't want to get too wiggly. Okay, so there we've got all our verticals and we're keeping them in order. And now this one, I'm going to do the same sort of wiggly cuts, but I'm going to cut them horizontally. And again, I'm going to keep them, I'll make it so you can see this, um, exactly in order. horizontals and all our um, straights. Now you'll notice that when a person weaves, even if you try to get them really closely together, you'll still spill off the original measurement of four by six. So I think this wide one that I, um, I have some extra space. So I'm going to make that, I'm going to start from here. And then anything that's left over, I'll, I, I have plenty of space to cut it off that end. And this too is a pretty wide one. I really thought that through before I talked about that with you. But we're going to sort of start from this corner and keep the edges straight on the top and the sides. So let me... Move this over a little and move this down into the middle. So then we're going to do the over, under, over, under, just like you would. Um, in, in any, um, plain weaving. Oh, you know, another variation, which would be obnoxious with Kirby's. But, but maybe with um, little skinnies like this, you could go, I mean, weaving has many patterns to it. You can go over two, under one, over three, under one, over four, under one, over three, under one, under two. You know, you can really mix it up. And you could probably go to Pinterest or YouTube might have videos on how to weave yarns, threads, in various patterns. Um, okay, so you know what? I'm going to put a little dot of glue up there. By the way, this is a, um, a, a hook and loop tape uh, Velcro. Um, and I stick my pin from here into there. A lot of people use magnets and all the magnets I have aren't very strong and the pin kept falling off and that was obnoxious and I wouldn't notice it falling off and then I'd lose it and then I was worse off than before. So, all right, so I'm going to glue these exactly square and in place. That'll help me kind of get a grip on the rest of the weaving. Yeah, see, even if I try to get those pretty close together, I'm going to have a lot of overlap right there that won't be able to fit in the weaving. And that's fine. You just sort of have to pick a place to start and a place that you know is going to get cut off. So 
going the opposite of over under. We're going to start out under. You know, this kind of thing is really ridiculous to do on camera. First of all, I'm trying to talk while I'm also trying to manage all these pieces of paper. Um, that whole left right brain thing. See, we're getting a really fun pattern, and this does look a little like a bumblebee. I recognize that. I thought about choosing other colors, and then I thought, well, let's just do it this way in praise of the bees. I'm not, um, I thought about maybe gluing down the rest of the yellows right here at the top. But I think I just want to get this woven first and make sure I can tuck everything up. Get it as close as I can. So this is pretty complicated. I would definitely not. I, I think a person might choose, depending on your child's um, skill levels and ages and everything. You might choose to share some of these projects with your children, but um, I would not recommend this for a young child. This is pretty fussy work and it, you know, it just makes it so it's more like frustration and less like fun. Or a little little person. I'm trying to sort of tuck some of these in. It's so interesting with the curves because it's hard to sort of tell what's square because it's not square. Okay. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm giving up just a little bit on the talk stuff. Because, look, isn't that fun? Kind of wild and crazy. All right, up, up, up. Uh. There we go. Oh. All right. So if this is the beginning and we want that corner to be square. Scooch that over and scooch the next one over as tight as we can. You know, and just naturally, the physics of this, um, there will be tiny bits of space um, between each. Um, each strip of paper. But we will end up with, I think. So you can tell we've got a, a bit of extra black down here and quite a bit of extra yellow. So let's do this. Let's glue. I'm going to 
definitely put Mod Podge over the top of this. Um, so I am only going to glue the outside flips and then the Mod Podge that I put over the top of the whole thing will hold everything else in place. But just while I'm moving it around, pasting a back on it and stuff and cutting the um, excess off. Oh, can you hear my dear table creaking? This is a table that was built by my dad for, I think, his workshop or something. Um, like a lot, a lot of years ago. He must have done this in the 70s maybe <laughs> so it's an old table and it has a right to creak and it does creak and someday maybe I will figure out or have somebody else figure out how to tighten up the leg mechanisms on the bottom so that stops creaking quite this much okay so there's that and then what I'm gonna do oh that's not what I want is I'm gonna take one of my pre-cut backers keeping in mind that this is the top edge and the perfect side edge and you know what? I'm going to take the big guns. So this is the top edge and the side edge of the back. And so with this glue, I'm gluing down all the papers on every edge on the back. Actually, let me take this brush and make sure that I'm getting glue to the edges. so that the uh, backer doesn't create um, you know so the edge of the backer here is glued down all the way around so look at how much got left over so I'm glad we picked, you know, this wide piece and this wide piece um, to be the excess. So then we'll go in and cut off this extra business. And I designed my backers to also be four by six inches, so that helps me know that I'm still sticking with a... Oh, check it out. So we have straight weaving. We have weaving with um, text paper and scrapbooking paper and metal tape, which is incredibly fussy. I don't necessarily recommend it, but it was a really fun exercise in what if. Um, a mix of text paper and plain paper and wiggly papers. So here we are. Um, 
how are we doing over oh, at 24 minutes so I'm not gonna add anything else in I wish you a lot of fun with this um, and please please feel free to keep it simple because this is going to be a really fun card to get in the mail. The colors are so bright and somebody's post post office post box, uh, mailbox, wherever you get mail, is going to be delightfully splendid, made splendid by your artwork, even if it's just a really simple, loose weave. You don't have to get all fancy like this. Although fancy is really fun because it definitely challenges your right and left brain to do it right. I wish for us today, oh, you know what? It's a little bit sunny today. It's not like a really sunny. There's a whole bunch of cloud cover, but somehow there's an awful lot of light poking through somewhere on the horizon. And um, there's quite a bit of light. So it's winter and I'm just feeling really precious about the light so I wish you in your life all of us in our lives um, all the light you need whatever time of day whatever manner of light it is um, be it uh, sunlight or lamplight or spiritual light um, may we all have all the light that we need Have a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye.